everyone. It is so good to meet with you again this week. I hope you've all had a great week so far. So to start us off, I have three cups of water. I have red, blue, and yellow. Now, who can tell me something about these colors? If you said that primary colors, you're correct. A primary color means you can't make this color by yourself. So we can't make red, blue, or yellow, but we can use red, blue, and yellow to make other colors. We know this to be true. So say I wanted orange. I'm gonna take my yellow cup of water. I'm going to add some red food coloring, whoops, red food coloring to it. Give it a stir. Add some more yellow to it. And it might be a little harder to see, but it has turned orange. Say I wanted to make the color green. I am going to take my yellow food coloring I'm going to put it into the blue. I'm going to give it a stir. And, oh, you can see this one really nicely through the glass. And now it has turned green. So we know that orange is made from red and yellow. Green is made from yellow and blue. And if we mix blue with red, we get the color. Any guesses? It's turned really dark in the cup, but it is purple. So these are facts that we know that we have learned and we know them to still be true. We've got purple, green, and orange. So this week, Pastor Mike is talking on Daniel chapter five, verses 18 through 30. And King Belshazzar is about to find out what these words meant. Mene, mene, tekel, parson. And if you remember King Belshazzar, he had been having a party with all of his friends and they were drinking their wine out of the cups that were only supposed to be in God's temple and they were not respecting God at all. They were doing what they wanted and King Belshazzar, just like his dad King Nebuchadnezzar had been, King Belshazzar was full of pride. He thought that he knew it was right, that he could do whatever he wanted, that he was safe inside his walls of Babylon, and that he was the one who was in control. And it was only because of himself that he had all this power and that people would just listen to him just because. And King Nebuchadnezzar, he had to learn about his pride through when God, he was still a King Nebuchadnezzar, but he became like a wild animal. Remember King Nebuchadnezzar was out walking on his roof, on his palace, and he was looking around and he said, look how great I am. Look at what all I have done. And just like that, King Nebuchadnezzar's mind became like an animal. And he went far away from people and he ate grass just like wild animals did. And he did that for a year when King Nebuchadnezzar realized that God is the one who is in control. That is when God let him think like a person again. And he no longer lived out in the wild. He no longer ate grass and he got his kingdom back. 
and it was even better than before. So King Belshazzar, you think he would have learned about pride and just how devastating, how bad the results of your pride can be because of what King Nebuchadnezzar went through, but King Belshazzar didn't. He would have heard the stories, but he decided to make the same decisions King Nebuchadnezzar had made and do what he wanted. And so when Daniel came, King Nebuchadnezzar told Daniel that he would give him a purple robe and a gold chain and make him the third greatest ruler in the kingdom. He told him what these words meant and Daniel was like, I don't want the gifts, but I will tell you what they mean. And what the words mean was, Mene, it means you've been given a certain number of days in your kingdom and today is the last one. Your days are numbered and now your days are ending. Teko, it means that God has looked at you and you've been found wanting. You are not doing what you should. Your heart is not good. And Parson means that Babylon is going to be split into two and given to the people, the Medes and the Persians. And also that King Belshazzar, he wouldn't survive the night. He wouldn't wake up in the morning. And so King Belshazzar, he heard all of this and he kept his promise and he gave Daniel the gold chain, the purple robe, and made him the third greatest in the kingdom. But that very night they did, they broke into Babylon and they overtook the city and it came true. The writing on the wall, exactly what it said it would. And King Belshazzar, he had a chance to learn from King Nebuchadnezzar, to learn from what pride can do to you. When you think that you're the one who's in control and you don't acknowledge God and the gifts and abilities he's given you and the fact that God is powerful and he allows us to do what we can do. He didn't learn from it. It would be like you seeing your brother or your sister losing TV or their phone for an entire week because they decided to watch a TV show that they weren't supposed to. But they did anyways. And the adults in your life found out. And so their consequence or their what happened to them because they disobeyed was because was they lost their phone or their TV privileges. But knowing what happened to your brother or sister, knowing that the mistakes they made and what their consequences were, you have the choice to go, hmm, well, I know what happened when they watched something they weren't supposed to, but you know what? I'm going to do it too. I'm going to make the same bad decision. That's not learning from what happened with them. We need to be willing to learn from the past. Just like we knew that red and yellow will always make green. We can look at the past and we can learn from it. We can see the good things that have happened. We can see the bad things that have happened. And hopefully we can choose the good decisions or to look at the bad decisions and go, how can I do that better? And God has told us how he wants us to live in the Bible. He has given us lots of examples on how to be kind, how to love others, how to care about people, why we shouldn't steal, why we shouldn't lie, why it's important to love God. And we can look at 
what God has told us there as well to help us to make right decisions. But it all comes down still to your decision, your choice. Just like King Belshazzar chose not to learn from King Nebuchadnezzar's mistakes, you too can still decide to do what you want, or you can choose to learn from the past and not to mis repeat the mistakes of others, but to live for God now. To end off with, we're going to sing two songs. The first one is, He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He has the itty bitty baby in his hands. He has the little bitty baby in his hands. He has the little bitty baby in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He has the wind and the rain in his hands. He has the wind and the rain in his hands. He has the wind and the rain in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He has everybody here in his hands. He has everybody here in his hands. He has everybody here in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. And our last song is going to be My God is so big. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. The mountains are his, the rivers are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you and you and you and you and you and you and you. I hope you have an amazing week and I will see you soon this way. Bye for now.